were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, the, 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 the word Pentecost simply means 50. And it was actually a Jewish festival. Which was celebrated after the wheat harvest. To demonstrate and to show gratitude to God. So it so happened that it fell between the time Jesus was crucified and resurrected. And so it became 50 days after Easter. So if you calculate it, you will notice that we celebrated Easter not too long ago. So it is 50 days after Easter. But the point is, what does it represent? It represents a new beginning or a new age or a new dispensation. When the spirit made salvation available to all through faith and repentance in Jesus. So if you listen to the sermon Apostle Peter preached on that occasion, he talked to, talked, talked to the people about believing and about repenting and receiving salvation of the Lord. Now, you will notice from the book of Genesis that the Bible said in the beginning, God said, let us. So, in the Old Testament, we saw God or the Father at work. So, everything revolved around the Father. Then you will remember when Jesus was being baptized, the Bible said as he stepped into the water, the heavens opened. And God thundered his voice and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So the father on that occasion introduced the dispensation of the son. For the son to take over where the father left off. So in the New Testament, the gospels, we began to see the ministration and the works of Jesus. So in the work of Jesus, he reminded them and made promises to them about a certain Holy Spirit that will be sent and released on the people of God. So that was the fulfillment. As a matter of fact, there had been a prophecy about it in the book of Joel, chapter 2. That in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men. So, so that was the day when that prophecy of Joel was being fulfilled. And then the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Or the day or the age of the Holy Spirit began. And we are in that age as I am speaking today. The Holy Spirit is still at work. And we need him more than ever before to impact our lives in order for us to impact our world. To make a difference in our lives so that we can also make a difference in our world. Say, I need the Holy Spirit. So number one, let's look at the promise of the Father. In John chapter 14 verse 16, Jesus said, and I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter or paracletos. A helper. So the comforter there means a helper. Say a helper. Now, you must be doing something for somebody to be able to help you. Am I right? So what are you doing? Remember, whatever you are doing, the Holy Spirit is with you. He will give you another comforter that he may abide with you for some time. That he may abide with you for some time. To abide with you a little time. But to abide with you for what? Forever. Now listen to this carefully. I wish I had sufficient time to show you about the will, the emotions, and the intellect of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. 
It is not a thing. He is a person. And you see, he is a perfect gentleman. If you don't invite him into the issues of your life, he stays aloof. So it's your responsibility to welcome the Holy Spirit into whatever activity you are involved in. If I am trying to lift this pulpit, I am, and I am not invited, and I know I am unable to lift it all by myself, and I am not inviting help, people, maybe you may have sympathy on me as pastor, and come and assist me. But if I am lifting it all by myself, what am I saying? I don't need you. I can do it all by myself. And that is how some people have been leading their lives. They think they can run the race all by themselves. They think they can marry all by themselves. Why do we wait to bring our marriage to the altar? Because we know by our own strength, we shall not prevail. We need the strength of Jehovah. Amen? At your workplace, in your business, in whatever you are involved in as far as your life is concerned. Remember this. You will always need the help and the support of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said he came to be your helper, your comforter, your paracletos, ever abiding with you. So you cannot say I am walking in the world and I have no help. You have a lot of help. You have not demanded for it and you have not asked for it. Somebody say amen. Luke 24 verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye. This is why the church of Pentecost called their tally. It is not tally. It is tarry. Tarry means to wait. So tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until ye be endued with power from on high. So watch this. Did you notice that until the baptism of Jesus and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on him, he didn't do any miracle. Did you, did you see that in scripture? He had not started his ministry. He only started his ministry when he was being baptized. And the father introduced him. And the Bible said the Holy Spirit, like a dove, settled upon him. Then from there, he went into the wilderness to wait on God, fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And then when he came out, went into the, 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 the synagogue, took the scroll of Isaiah, and began to declare. The Bible said, as his custom was, which means he often went into the temple or into the synagogue to go and read, because those times, we didn't have Bibles like we do today. So if you want to read the Bible, you have to go to the synagogue where there is a copy. And then he began to read, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For he has anointed me to heal the broken hearted. What am I trying to tell you? You cannot start anything. You cannot achieve anything. You cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus himself didn't try it. So why do you want to try that? He said, wait until you are endued with power from on high. So on the day of Pentecost, that is what we saw happening. Power from on high was released upon them. And I, I, I will show you pretty shortly the effect, the effect of the Holy Spirit when it comes on you. Now, power to do what? That is the second point. Power to do what? And I said, power without action leads to abuse. I remember I had a friend. And he told me a story about a gentleman who had acquired magical or juju powers to fight. So he said, because he was aware of that kind of thing, he also knew what to do. So he said the guy began to charge before the fight. He began to charge and his muscles began to enlarge and became wild like, a, like an animal. Now, the secret is even though the guy was charged, you don't give him a blow. Once you give him a blow, he will tear you apart. So he said he also stood there and kept watching. And because the power had come, and the power was not being used the way it ought to be used, guess what? It began to beat the ground, hit the ground, hit the grass, hit the wall, 
He ended up destroying his own knuckles. Because he didn't get a human being to respond and to fight with him. And that is what I believe happens. When the anointing is on us, when the Holy Spirit's presence is upon us, and we don't find something useful to do with the anointing, we begin to abuse it. The word abuse comes from two words. Abnormal use. So that is why people can come to young ladies and tell uh, that the, the Lord is leading me to marry you. Then goes to another lady. The Lord, so you alone, the Lord is leading you to marry three or four ladies. Which Lord or which Holy Spirit is that? The Lord said you are my wife. Then you go to another person. The Holy Spirit said you are my wife. So when we are not putting the Holy Spirit to use or allowing him to work through us, we begin to abuse the power on us. Have you even seen that even in movie, movies and in songs, secular songs, they are making fun of us with speaking in tongues. The Bible says that speaking in tongues is what? Praying in the spirit. And when you pray in the spirit, according to uh, Jude, verse 20, he says, you are building up on your most holy faith. So speaking in tongues is not something you, when you meet your friend, shaka baba bobo, siki taribo. No, that is not it. Apostle Paul said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But because we have abused the Holy Spirit, we have not permitted the Holy Spirit, we have not allowed the Holy Spirit, we have limited the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. He is being abused everywhere. Musicians are abusing him. In the cinemas, he's been abused. Many years ago, there was this story of some children of Kanda. Those were the days when we had fellowship. Kanda fellowship, Kaneshi fellowship, Asylum Down fellowship, the beginning of the charismatic wave. So some young men gathered in the classroom to pray. And so some children in the community thought it was a joke. So they also went to the same room and began to shout in tongues. As they were shouting in tongues, then the Holy Spirit took over. They couldn't control themselves again. He took over completely. So it took one of the members of the fellowship who was passing by, who saw what was going on, went into the room and began to minister to the children. The Holy Spirit is not a fluke. Neither is he a joke. He is a real person. Listen to this. The way you go to a place where you are celebrated. And you don't go to a place where you are not celebrated. The same way, if you celebrate the Holy Spirit, he will be around you. If you deny and refuse and reject him, he will also stay away from you. But church, I came to encourage us today. That it is time we give the Holy Spirit its rightful place in our lives, in our church, in our marriages. Amen. Acts 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. Now the word power means divine enablement, divine ability, divine strength. You shall receive power or enablement or divine strength. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. What is the scripture talking about here? When he says you will be a witness, I said last week that it is not only going to knock at people's door to do house-to-house -house evangelism. It includes that. Amen? It includes setting up a crusade to try to win the loss. It includes that. But listen to this carefully. It includes also your everyday life. Apostle Paul said, like I showed you last week, that our lives are like open epistle or letter being read by all. So the way you relate with your workers, the way you relate with your wife, the way you relate with your husband, the way you relate with your children, the Bible says God has been a witness. So it is not just your wife. She is my wife, so I can treat her any way I like. You are lying. She is not just your wife. 
God says, I've been a witness between your, you and your wife. So God is a witness. And God is expecting you to also be a witness to your wife. To be a witness to your husband. To be a witness to your what? Your children. At your workplace. He expects you to be a witness at your workplace. So your life must be a witness of the existence of your God. And it's only when, you see, for me, I don't, I, I don't need to, to, to go around introducing myself. I am a Christian. I, when you are filling forms, are you a, what is your religion? I'm a Christian. I'm not a Christian. No, I don't need to do that. Have you had a dog that barked and barked so well that went to the, the owner and said, today did you see how I barked? No. Dogs are designed to bark at anything that is strange. Am I right? So it is in it. It is within them to bark. So when you become a child of God, it is within you to operate and do certain things. Which may even look and sound abnormal to the people in the world. So you receive power in order or ability or strength to demonstrate the glory of God. To demonstrate the glory of God wherever you find yourself. What is the, what, let me give you an example. Acts chapter 2 verse 41. We all know the story of Peter. When Jesus was arrested to be judged before Pontius Pilate. The Bible said while Jesus was going through his trial, Peter was warming himself by a fire and there was this little girl when the bible said maid it doesn't mean a maid servant in the bible days women were called maid so it could be a little it was a little girl and the girl said ah you look like one of his disciples jesus said no i am not one of them can you imagine jesus denied sorry peter denied jesus then the girl said, after a while, the girl said again, ah, look at you. If it is that your accent, the way you speak, even betrays you. The Bible said, Peter began to swear. Me, I don't know him. No, 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 no. The way Jesus was buried, he called the other disciples, J. John and Bartholomew and the other, he said, now I go a fishing. In other words, I am deserting. The ministry of being a fisher of men to go and do what? To go to my proper profession. So he deserted Jesus and went back to his profession. But that same Peter, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon him and people began to mock and scoff and despise what God is doing, the Bible said he got up and stood up before them with boldness. And declare to them, men and brethren, this is not what, what you are thinking. We are not drunk as you suppose. But this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And the Bible said, at the end of his preaching, what happened? 3,000 souls got saved. What happened to the timidity? The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of timidity or the spirit of fear. Fear is not your portion. Timidity is not your portion. Amen. The Bible said the righteous is as bold as a lion. Be like your Lord Jesus Christ. The, when the Holy Spirit is in you, it makes you bold. So he stood up boldly and preached. And on that occasion, 3,000 souls got saved. Not only that, in Acts 4 verse 13, they had tried to heal in fact, they were now going to have their prayer service. Or they were now going to pray. And when they got to the gate called Beautiful, this man who had been dead, crippled, and had always been begging for alms. On this, I mean, Jesus saw that man. Because if Jesus often went to the temple, it means he saw him. If the disciples followed Jesus to the temple, it means they often saw the man. But on this occasion, when they got there, and Apostle Peter got there, and they demanded, the man demanded for uh, money. Apostle Peter said, silver or gold, I don't have. But such as I have, I give to you. So we all know the story. The man 
left to his feet and began to walk. And then Apostle Peter seized the opportunity and began to share the good news. What are we talking about here? Sometimes when your colleague at the office comes to you with his or her marital problem, it is an opportunity to minister the goodness of God to that person. That is not the time to say, oh, men, don't mind men. All the men are the same. Who told you that all the men are the same? Oh, uh, all the women are the same. Who told you all the women are the same? The girls have a song. Say, Sroto Yemi. Eh? Sroto Yemi. I saw a young lady on the internet. She said, if um, any man who wants to be with me, that man should be able to give me 10,000 Ghana cities every month. We sell her in a to be able to service this young lady, 10,000 Ghana cities every month. Unless you become a thief. Another person said, if you don't show me the money, I will not show you some things. And I said, keep whatever you want to show me. I will show you the money. So you see why we did the Holy Spirit now. That don't tell your neighbor, all the men are the same. All the men are not the same. Don't say all the women are the same. They are not all the same. You as a person choose to make a difference. Let people see that as for you, you don't tolerate those things. Let them know. As a child of God. So the Bible said when they were placed, they were arrested and placed before the Sahindrin. The Sahindrin is like the supreme court of the land. Once you go before the Sahin, the letter says, What's happening? Baby, I don't know. But the Bible said, Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They did what? They marveled. They did what? They marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Listen to this. Apart from being bold, God wants your life to be a marvel. You are here to be a sign and a wonder. Let me give you this illustration. Secondary school from three, we had a guy, in, a very notorious guy. I don't even remember his name because most people were called with a guy name. So all I remember is Achana Ray. We returned from long term, uh, from too long uh, vacation break. When we got to Form 3, this gentleman had become quiet all of a sudden. A very loud person, always making trouble, but suddenly he had become quiet. He would come to school, he would sit down and study to the end of the day. He wouldn't quarrel with anyone, he wouldn't fight with anyone. We had these chairs with the metal legs and we used to throw them at each other. Because after all, when it breaks, when you go to the store, plenty was packed there. So we used the chairs like so, so he could throw the chair. Then somebody will reply. But when this gentleman got saved, that was the first time I saw someone who is truly born again. The guy could come and sit quietly, do his studies. All the things he used to do, he never did them anymore. He became a what? A marvel. I saw it in my own life when I got saved. I became a marvel. My father was then living in Lagos. And so when he returned, his conclusion was my mother had given me a special training and had excluded his children. But what he didn't know was that something on the inside was working on the outside. Marvel. How do you become a marvel? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Bible said when they observed Peter and John, they marveled. You must be, you, you, you must be a sign in your neighborhood. People who knew you. Today when people get born again, we don't see anything. All the else, they say they be quite sorry you. When a guy is chasing the lady, say, oh, no, me, I don't, I, 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 I go to church. Because, then the guy too will say, me should be quite sorry. Me too, I go to church. It's not a matter of I go to church. 
Let them know the kind of person you are. And let them know that you don't tolerate that lifestyle. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if a man or a woman be in Christ, he is a new creature or species. All things are past. Are past. Behold, all things are become what? New. So the new you marvels people. And one of the things I feared the most was to backslide. Because I saw people backslide and I didn't like what I saw. One guy, he wanted to go to the nightclub. So he pretended that he was going to do evangelism. And I said, in the nightclub, in our days we call it disco. There, there are all these flashing lights, mirrors. So what are you, how, who, and the person is not there to be preached to. The person is there because of the lust of the flesh. So it is not an appropriate forum, forum to preach the gospel. Guess what? The guy backslided. Because they preached their gospel to him and he loved it. Another gentleman, he was one of the leaders of the fellowship where I got saved. He would sometimes come to fellowship drunk. One day, I was in the States and I got his contact and we began to talk. And he was full of praise for my, the position I took to serve the Lord. And he said, today as you speak to me, all my teeth are off. I'm now wearing artificial teeth. I can't even fly because I've developed all in heart. I mean, this is someone I looked up to. But he backslided. And I didn't like his end. Recently, I made contact with the sister again. And I was trying to make contact with him. He said, oh, he died two years ago. Very promising. Very promising. And loaded with testimonies. So because I was scared to backslide, I threw everything I had into serving God. Because people were telling me what they were witnessing is going to be a nine-day wonder. And I wanted them to know that it is going to be an eternal affair. Eternal love affair with God. And thank God, throwing myself into the things of God has saved me till date. And you are a new creature. So, what do you do? The Bible says that as newborn babes, let's do what? Let's imbibe, let's receive the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. Listen, when I got saved, nobody followed me up to chase me, to come to church, to go to prayer. I was there 30 minutes before the meeting started. Two weeks after getting born again, I was leading prayer meeting at all night. Two weeks. So this is the thing the Holy Spirit comes. When, when you are determined to serve God, he will be there to assist you. So you have to get determined. Now listen, I am sick and tired of the world. So young boy, at that age, what, I, what have I seen at that time? I've seen a lot, though I was young. And I didn't like the things I saw in the world. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, 28. said, is that what I rather got? I'm looking for the one who said, likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities. Maybe I, can you check 23 for me? 8.23. No. I'm sure it's in the 20s. But the, but the, the point here is it says, that like, likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities. Now, what is infirmity? Infirmity is weakness. You got it now. Okay, 26. That's right, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. By the Spirit itself, it's supposed to be himself, not itself. That was an error. The Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, what is infirmities? 
Infe have you heard of the word infirmary? Eh? Huh? Infirmary is the same as hospital, clinic, where weak people are taken to be taken care of. Infirmities has to do with a weakness. Don't tell me, Pastor, I have a weakness. People, don't we say that um, this is my weakness? It's good to you, you identify it. But the Holy Ghost is there to assist you, to help with your weakness. So they said, likewise, the spirit. So you see that the spirit is capital S, not small s. The spirit himself helps our weakness. Helps our weakness. Helps our weakness. Do you have a weakness? Invite the Holy Spirit into your weakness. Don't tell me it is so small a matter. Why should I trouble the Holy Spirit? It doesn't matter how minute it is. Invite the Holy Spirit. Call on the Holy Spirit. He said, call on me. And I will hear or, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. So it doesn't matter. So my warrior, instead of going to a prophet to anoint you, listen, apart from the one your pastor has approved of, I can tell you from my years of experience, I know people, they went to places and some strange or suffer laid hands on them. Today, as I am speaking, it's like they are mentally off. I'm telling you. There was one, Pastor Amma was very interested in her and wanted to marry her at that time. Today, as I'm speaking, I'm sure if Pastor Amma had married her by now, it would have been a different story. She's gone off. Because she was an usher in our church. When she went to join this place, because she could pray and was hardworking, they made her a dickness. And when there is a deliverance church, when they are doing deliverance, all the dickens and the dicknesses come around. And when demons come out, they always look for a place. But because she wasn't that strong in the things of God and in the things of the spirit, they jumped on her and began to torment her life. They began to torment. So when we say, don't just produce your head for just anybody, unless your pastor or anyone your pastor approves of, don't let them lay hands on you. As any sorry, be any sorry. Is somebody listening to me? Any sorry, be any sorry. The facts are what about yes with him. And she said, yeah, sorry. You don't know where they, what they buried, where the puppet sits. You don't know what they buried there. You don't know the rituals. Sometimes they will say, in the name of Jesus. They don't say Jesus. They say Jesus. They are two different things. I mean, two same footballers who are called Jesus. So they say, Jesus. It doesn't mean anything. Please be careful. Be principled and be, I mean, embrace your values and commit your weakness. Listen, everybody has got some. Everybody. Like Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Tamil said, who doesn't have a hospital card? Wave your hand. Everybody has got a hospital card. We all go to the hospital. So that in the same vein, we all have issues we are dealing with in our marriages. Say, Pastor, do you have issues in your marriage? Yes, I do. I am not that perfect husband. I am trying. By the grace of God. Amen. And I keep asking God for more grace every day. To be that perfect husband. Are you a perfect parent? No. I am not. I, I am trying to attain perfection. I know I will never attain perfection. Are you not perfect pastor? No. But you see. I will admit my fault when I make a mistake. That is the way of the wise. I will not pretend. You know. In the Bible we have a group of people called Amorites. We all try to become Amorites. I'm all right. I'm all right. Meanwhile, you know you are not all right. <laughs> so don't be an I'm all right. If you have a burden, take it to God. If you think it is too much for you, the Bible said, if two of you shall agree on anything, that is why we go to pastor. So when you go to pastor, you are going to, to, to pastor with your faith and touch and agree to believe God for a miracle, but not to go and dump... Pastoring work is not dumping uh, your troubles on the pastor and you run away. The so you take a, a, a tin of milo, some uh, tins of milk, some sugar, and some bread. The pastor should fast for you. It doesn't work like that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very deceptive way of leading people. Because you see, the pastor cannot be with everybody wherever you find yourself. One day I found myself 
sitting in the valley of the shadow of death in Haiti. Not in, we all are familiar with the capital of Haiti, Porto Prince. No, we didn't go to Porto Prince. We went to a place called Pion. It's like far away in the Brongafo region somewhere. And I couldn't speak Creole and I couldn't speak French. So I was sitting there alone in the valley of the shadow of darkness. And it was dark. And I was carrying a lot of stuff. All the Americans left. And I was left alone with the things. And anytime you see an American, what comes into your mind? Dollars. So what if I was attacked? So I said, God, what am I sitting here doing? So have you forgotten you promised that even if I send you to Timbuktu, you will go, you, so you are sitting in Pion, sit down quietly and endure. So there are certain things you have to endure, say endurance. Amen. Amen. If you want a perfect life, not in this life, in, it will be in the afterlife. So learn to take your weaknesses. Romans 8 verse 1. Said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Listen, he has thrown all your sins and your iniquities into his sea of forgetfulness. Sometimes people will come, Pastor, when I was a young lady, I committed abortion. So I, I want you to pray for God to forgive me. He forgave you. I don't have to pray for you. He forgave you. But you see, if the pastor is one of those, he will take advantage and milk you a little because of your ignorance. But take it from me. Said there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Then God is not holding any sin against you. You are free. That is why the Holy Spirit came. To set you free. So that you can walk in the realms of the supernatural. Amen. I've put a teaching together. Entitled the spirit life. The spirit life. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Because some people try to bamboozle us. And take advantage of us. When it comes to walking in the spirit. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? Jesus said in John 6, 63. He said the word that I speak to you. They are spirit and they are life. The words I speak to you they are what? Spirit and they are what? Life. So when the life of God is in you. You speak life into people. Amen. I want to conclude with John 14, 12. John 14, 12. If you can, we can have it very quickly. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John 14, 12. Say, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go Unto my father. You are here on earth with the divine ennoblement of the Holy Spirit to do greater works. Say, I am here to do greater works. Jesus said, What I have done, if I have been able to help people, you should be able to help more people than me. All the miracles I have done, all the things I did in my day, in your day, you should be able to do better and bigger. So you are here for greater works. Listen, don't just take delight in coming to church and dance before. It's wonderful. You see, let me repeat it. Church is like a filling or a gas station. What do you go and do at a filling station? You go and top up your gas or your fuel. Am I right? So anytime we come to church, we come and receive encouragement. That's why we call it inspirational service. So when you buy your petrol, where do you go? To your destination. You have a destiny in God. You, there is a place you are going. There, there is a journey you are undertaking. So every time you come to church, Pastor Tukofi was talking about how, and I used to say it, that I, I hated Tiko. Small car like a kambu. And I used to make fun of it that I can use my left hand. I am right handed. 
So you can tell that in my left hand there is no strength. But I used to say that I can lift the thicker car with my left hand and throw it away. Meanwhile, it turned out that that was Pastor Tukafio's dream car. So I said, is it because he himself is petite? So he just wants a tickle. But listen to me. There is nothing wrong to start small. You can start with tickle, but don't remain with tickle. You can start with Daewoo, but don't stay with Daewoo. If you go to school and you remain in class one for the rest of your life, it means something is wrong. You must, be, you must keep moving forward. Amen? So when I said that, he took that desire and the drive to believe God for a tickle. So sometimes you will come to church, we will speak the word of the Lord. We may address an issue in your life. It's not because I didn't know it was just about two or three weeks ago that he mentioned it. But I didn't know that I had affected him in that way. And I know that about myself. So sometimes I may say things. It doesn't mean somebody told me the Holy Spirit. You see, when you come and stand here, you are talking to the people of God. So the Holy Spirit inspires you to say a word. One word that will bless one person may not bless the other. But God has to make sure that every one of you takes something away from the service. So don't get annoyed or get offended. When we preach or minister and we say something, if it concerns your hometown or it concerns your family or it concerns the life of your child, don't say somebody has gone to gossip to pastor about me. Nobody has gossiped. The spirit of God is working on you. And some of us, we think when the spirit of God is working, we must be hopping on one leg. You don't need to. Huh? You don't need to. So sometimes I look into people's faces and I say a word because I didn't close my eyes and pretend to be in the spirit. So all those things are shenanigans and gimmicks. Uh, look, they are all gimmicks. And there is a way they gather the information for your information. If God, God, don't you know your name? If God wants to work on you, I say, Pastor, what, I've mentioned people's names before. Oh, yes. But that is not the only spectacular way God does his things all the time. You know your name. I don't have to come and stand here and say, I know you are Amelia. You know you are Amelia. Whatever God has put in my mouth to say to Amelia, I just say it. I don't even have to say, that's here the Lord. The most important thing is, does it concern my life? Of a truth, is God speaking to me to amend my ways, to adopt a new strategy and realign myself with his word, speak his word, confess his word, talk his word, and realign my spirit, soul, and body, and flow with the spirit of God. Greater works shall you do. And I am expect, I'm expecting greater works. Listen, when you do greater works, it, I am not that type who is pained, disturbed, troubled that you are doing well. I am rather excited. If my church member drives a brand new car to church, I am happy. Why? Because I can see the good hand of the Lord upon your life. When you get promoted at work, I am happy. It means you are doing something good and right at your workplace. Amen? So I am not that type of pastor who is envious and jealous of his church members. In fact, I will applaud you the most because I feel proud that my church member is not retrogressing, but my church member is worth progressing. Stand and let's pray. <laughs> breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Yesterday's gone, today I'm in need. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Bring in me, bring in me. Holy Ghost fire burning me. Yesterday's gone, today I'm in need. Oh, Holy Ghost fire burning me. Burning me, my Lord. Yesterday's gone, today I'm 
Spirit has spoken to you and has touched your life through the tubes of the camera and the screen of your television, of your iPad, of your telephone. I continue to pray for you that the Holy Spirit will keep manifesting himself to you daily and continually as you draw closer to the Lord. He said, draw closer to me and I will draw closer to you. May he draw closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to continue praying this prayer as even as you go home. That is.